Hollywood. It's the Tom Likens Show. This is your game now, gentlemen. And now. And now. Here he is. Tom Likens. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likens Show. <laughs> oh, my God. The economy continues to swirl around the drain. Have you seen the latest on the economy? Oh, my. There it goes. Let it go all the way. That's where it's going. We haven't quite gotten there yet, but that's where it's going. Some of the latest to bite the dust here, the... The parent of the Black Angus Steakhouse restaurant chain has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. The latest in a fast-growing list of business bankruptcies caused by the troubled economy and lower consumer spending. Picus ARG Holding Incorporated, based in Los Altos, California, filed for protection from creditors with the U.S. Bankruptcy Court in Wilmington, Delaware. Black Angus has 69, he said 69, 69 restaurants in seven western U.S. states and employs more than 3,600 people, a court filing shows. Lisa Poulin, Pegasus' chief restructuring officer, Hatchet Girl is what that would mean, I imagine, in a filing said, the recessionary economic environment caused lower sales, which fell about 26% from 2006 to 2008. Boy. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, and this is not a knock on Black Angus. It's, you know, every restaurant has its price point. Wouldn't Black Angus be the kind of restaurant that people would trade down to? Like, if you couldn't afford to eat at the Palm or Mastro's or... In the case of Los Angeles, Nick and Steph's, or you know, at, at, at some of the top of the top steakhouses, but wouldn't Black Angus be a place some people might go? I guess not many of them are even going there. They skipped Black Angus. Whether they skipped Black Angus, went directly down to Sizzler, or in New York. Have you ever been to New York and seen Tad Steaks? What were they? Three ninety nine. <laughs> That's good eating. It says you're making matters worse. The debtors' restaurants primarily are located in some of the areas hardest hit by the mortgage crisis. Isn't that true? Wouldn't you expect a Black Angus to be in, like, you know, Corona, Rancho Cucamonga, Upland, you know, places like that? <laughs> So it's a double whammy. They, like, opened uh, all these stores in all these growing areas, which are now shrinking. Wow. So it says here, this caused consumers in those markets to cut back on discretionary spending, such as dining out. So uh, Black Angus files for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. And uh, this also in uh, the Boston Globe newspaper. Said today it will offer buyouts to all newsroom employees by the end of the month in an effort to cut as many as 50 jobs. The Boston Globe, by the way, is owned by New York Times Corporation. In a memo to employees, Globe editor Martin Barron said, Our industry is facing unprecedented financial pressures, most recently because of economic conditions that are the worst in many decades. We have had to adjust before to a difficult financial picture, and we now must do it again. And as always with these buyouts, it says here, both union and management employees will be eligible for the buyouts, but if too few agree to leave voluntarily, Barron said, the company will resort to layoffs. And by the way, when they lay you off, you don't get all that stuff you get in the buyout. I have more than one friend that was uh, offered like a voluntary buyout and it was really sweet. And uh, all the people thought the same thing. Oh, <laughs> if they ever get to layoffs, they'll never lay me off. They're probably enough people to take the buyout, so I'm not going to take the buyout. And then later they get laid off. And they get nothing. Wow. So the Boston Globe, shrinking. Black Angus restaurants, filing Chapter 11. That's just today. <laughs> <laughs> That's to 
day. The list keeps getting long. We should somewhere keep a list of all the companies that are doing this because I read these to you on the air every day, and every day it just gets worse. Doesn't seem to be getting better. I saw a story on CNBC today that said that uh, even more banks were expected to fail in 2009. You thought the worst was over. They said no. It's amazing. I had my money at uh, a bank, and um, I did what a lot of people did at my bank. I uh, put it in, uh, they, well, they said, well, you can get more interest if you put it in a money market account. And, of course, if you read the fine print, it tells you not insured by the FDIC. So I called my bank today and made sure all of my money is in FDIC insured accounts. And you know why I did that? Because even though they pay less interest, the interest rate is so low, I won't miss the money. I mean, the interest rate is down in the vicinity of one quarter percent. Who cares? I just want the guarantee that my money's going to be there. Holy cow. So, um, you know, the stuff just keeps happening. And people keep getting laid off. People keep uh, living in fear. Don't see a lot of optimism out there. You know, the only optimism I've seen uh, in the financial community has been from Warren Buffett, who, depending on the list you read, is one of the three richest men of the world. He's one of the number one, two, or three, depending on whose list you believe. Warren Buffett is buying stock, and that's good news because I, I follow Warren Buffett, and my uh, one of my mutual funds invests heavily in his Berkshire Hathaway. And um, if Warren Buffett is buying, that's a good sign to me. But I'm looking way down the line here. I'm looking long-term the way he is. If he can be as old as he is and continue looking long-term like that, so can I. But, uh, my goodness, the things people are cutting back on and the effect it's having on business. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. What's going on? Names of businesses you never thought would be in trouble. Today I heard that Bank of America said they want more TARP money. They want the government to give them more funds. They had taken some funds before, now they want more. This is Bank of America. That's a very big bank. A very big bank. Citibank. Isn't that the biggest bank in the world? Citibank in trouble. HSBC in trouble. <laughs> it just blows you away. Every day I wake up in the morning, and do you get this uh, feeling sometimes? It's just, it's it's depressing. I mean, you uh, you open up the paper, you turn on the TV, or you talk to another friend who's lost a job, or been furloughed or cut back or whatever. It's pretty outrageous stuff. I always like to get your pulse on these things at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. So the latest, Black Angus files for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. The Boston Globe, a newspaper owned by the New York Times, cutting 50 jobs. A newspaper that people thought was really healthy. Guess what? Uh-uh. And uh, now Bank of America asking for more TARP money. Citibank continuing to unravel. Citibank, by the way, is being forced to uh, sell half of their Smith Barney unit to, to Morgan Stanley. And uh, so Morgan Stanley will run Smith Barney, and Citibank will still own 49% of it, but uh, they're getting a couple of billion for that. And they're going to use that to... Uh, <laughs> take care of some of their obligations, so they've got a lot of them. So, just taking your pulse here, let's uh, take it right now. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. And now here is six days a week. Don't forget our Saturday show, 2 until 6 p.m. this Saturday. 2 until 6 p.m. this Saturday on 97.1 FM Talk and blowmeuptop.com.
1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Jason on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Hey, I got a concern. How you doing? I don't know if you're concerned about it. Uh, what, if, what if these companies that are going out of business stop uh, with their advertising dollars? Uh, you're going to find yourself on the street. Well, then don't, get, don't kid yourself, pal. Uh, every I'm average... Just, every, just well, well, if you want me to answer your question, I'm about to answer it, but you have to shut your trap. You shut your trap. Uh, goodbye. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Uh, by the way, whose trap is shut now, moron? <laughs> Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Mike? Let's say hi to Joe on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Joe. How are you today, buddy? Great. I am. Uh, I was just chiming in. I thought I'd, I'd share a little story here. I'm in the pool service industry and uh, here in Southern California. And I tell you what, uh, a ton of my customers are just losing jobs left and right. This, this is impacting a lot of people. And, and some people are saying, you know, oh, no, you know, Southern Cal doesn't have that kind of uh, devastation happening, you know, like the rest of the country. But there, there's some there's some stuff happening here. I've got a client who's, uh, you know, who's been an attorney, working for an attorney firm downtown L.A. for about 20 years. They just canned her, just sent her home, pack it. Her and two other, uh, 200 other employees and her best friend, also in the law, another law firm uh, downtown, same story, about 150 just out the door, just yeah. like that. After yeah. years and years, and years of, of being dedicated to them. Um, you know, it's crazy. It's happening. It's happening. I mean, uh, how can you avoid it? How can you avoid seeing it? Uh, you can't. You can't. I just wanted to chime in on that, Tom. Take me out tribal style, baby. I certainly will. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. This is Matthew on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Oh, that was fast. I didn't expect it to be that quick. Um, man, that's awesome. Uh, I just want to ask you: Do you think we're going into a depression again? And uh, if we are, do you think it's uh, if uh, if it's Obama's uh, obligation to to kind of prepare us for it and to tell us the truth and like? Well, I don't think I don't think Obama has painted a pretty picture at all. Uh, every time he has spoken. Uh, recently in Washington, uh, he has said that uh, things are bad and getting worse. Uh, he, uh, <laughs> at, at no time has he painted a, a, a rosy picture here at all. But, I mean, he need, does he need to be, like, more blunt with us and just tell us, hey, you guys need to, like, do something to, to be prepared for it because this is, this is going to be a long-term thing? Well, I don't think uh, anybody really knows for sure what it's going to be. Right now, Obama's primary goal is to try to get uh, a stimulus package passed, try to get some government works up and running, uh, try to get some people uh, uh, employed. And that's what he's trying to do. Honestly, I don't think the smartest people in America know what's going to happen or how it's going to happen. People keep saying, is this a depression? It's like, uh, uh, well, the people who lived through the depression uh, of uh, 1929 to the mid-30s, many of them say this feels an awful lot like that. I mean, what would our depression look like? I mean, it would be a lot different than what, I see, what you see in the pictures, like in the history books or whatever. But what would you think our depression would look like if well, we were to have one? I think you'd see uh, tumbleweeds blowing through shopping malls. I think you would see the biggest, some of the biggest banks going down and not coming back up. Uh, I think you would see uh, 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 government uh, resources taxed to the limit, people lining up for food, people lining up for... Uh, uh, other government services like uh, health care. I mean, I, I, those are just some of the things I think you could see. And you think that could really happen here? Oh, know, it could, I, I, well, I think it could happen if, if we don't handle this properly. So what do we do, Tom? You're, you're our savior, man. <laughs> well, uh, the, the most important thing in, in my point of view, and I did not live for the first impression, so I don't know about that, uh, but uh, to me the most important thing to do uh, is for people uh, to stay focused and for us to try to help the people who have honestly tried to work hard, who have honestly stated their income in mortgage applications, uh, and uh, we should take the Bernie Madoffs and the other creeps and criminals and put them away for a very long time and put Wall Street on notice uh, that those of you who are still in business, when you do this stuff, you're going away for a long time. 
because we need to get the confidence of people to put money back into investments and to save. Uh, we we got to have that happen. And what's really scary is the deficit that we have. I mean, how are we going to expect to pay it off in the next few years if uh, if we we can't even you know we have no money and we go into a depression? What well, would that do? I'm recommending. Well, yeah, I've been telling everybody for a long time, and some people have taken my advice, and most just think I'm crazy. I've been telling every listener to pay down your debt, save money, put away a year's worth of living expenses, live below your means. I mean, it seems like we're going the way the USSR went, you know, like slowly just a big collapse. Well, but uh, here's the thing. I mean, uh, that was totally different. That was a communist country. This is a capitalist country. We've got, uh, other, we've, got okay. other, we've got other issues they didn't have, and they have issues we don't have. I mean, the fact is that we're a debtor nation now, and uh, the word uh, that I'm reading is that China is uh, starting to lose their affection for investing in dollars. And they're increasing their military spending by crazy. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I got to tell you, this is the wi this is the wild card factor in all of this, and and it, it, this is scary, and that's something that people don't think about. We're so busy worrying about Black Angus going out of business. You know, what would happen now if we had, for example, in Southern California, a, a seven point zero earthquake, or what would happen if somebody committed a terrorist attack now, or tried to start a war against us? Our military is stretched thin. Our resources are stretched thin. Our natural resources, uh, commodities, what have you, are stretched thin. What would happen if somebody did that? How how would we react? What would we do? We we would get decapitated. Well, I don't know what would happen, but I'm I'm just saying that this, this is something people have to pay attention to in addition to the economy because weak economy means we are weak uh, militarily and defensively. We're vulnerable in all ways. No, yeah, no matter what anybody tells you. Yeah, well, Tom, uh, bless you, man. Love you. You're a good guy, and uh, I always look up to you. Matthew, thank you for the call. I appreciate it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Patrick on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi Tom, nice to speak to you. Yes. I have a question, sir. Um, instead of paying off, you know, giving the seven hundred billion dollars to the banks to do whatever they want to do with it, why wouldn't the government help uh, the consumer or the uh, the, the uh, resident by paying off their debt, so their credit card debt, their house debt, you know, whatever it is. Uh, so it, you know, it frees up the people themselves and also gives the bank more money to deal with as well by, you know, paying off their debt. I don't believe they should do that. Uh, what I do believe is that if they were going to lend money to banks, uh, they should have had uh, uh, checks and balances to make sure that the bank lends that money out to the people who need it. You see, I think it's time we cut loose the deadbeats and the dead wood. I really do. Because they're part of the reason we're here. So all the people with the stated income loans who make $28,000 a year and they put down they make $200,000 a year, those people should be homeless. They should be kicked out of their homes, and we shouldn't do one thing to help them. But what about the guys who be being honest or who lose their jobs after you know a long, long time at work or who just got out of school but can't find a job? Well, I don't think we should pay their debts. Uh, I think we should have jobs for people like that. And I think we need to educate people about uh, debt and about being responsible. And so that they uh, will get their own house in order. The reason our country is in such a mess, the reason we've got deficits the way we do, is because that's how people live their personal lives in America. That's true. Okay. We need to get our own act together. It starts at home. I, I, I'm amazed at the number of people who criticize the government for having a big deficit, who themselves have a big deficit in, in their home finances. Yeah, that's, that's true. Okay. All right. Well, uh, just want to ask a question. Next slide. Thank you. I, we have to get our own acts together, folks. We do. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here comes Matt on the Tom Likas show. Hello. What's going on, Tom? Not much. I've got a question for you. Yeah. Um, I work in the defense industry, um, the more particular uh, computer defense industry. Um, just want to get your opinion. Where do you think that, that type of work is headed in this uh Economy. The defense industry? Right. Um, I don't think that uh, business is going to be hurt at all uh, in the short term. Um, I do believe that what Joe Biden said, though it, it, it certainly couldn't have helped uh, Barack Obama's campaign, is probably true. 
We now start to hear from Osama bin Laden again. He had a tape come out this week. And I think at some point someone's going to test our resolve. I think it's going to happen. Uh, we're going to need a strong military. There's no doubt about it. Plus, uh, Barack Obama, although he wants to get out of Iraq, wants to uh, beef up our presence in Afghanistan. Right, he does. Yeah. Honestly, we should be beefing up our security at home. I, 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 we, I should, we should stop focusing on Osama bin Laden and start focusing on beefing up the security of our country. Yeah. Well, cool, Tom. Uh, can you kick me out with a huge bong hit? Yes. Here you go, Matt. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show at one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom. Shorter commercial breaks, less commercials. More phone calls. We take them faster, blazingly fast. That means even you can get on the air at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's Jim on the Tom Like It Show. Hello. Hi Tom, how are you? I'm doing great. This is Jim. I'm calling from Canada. Love your show, love your passion. You are the alpha male friend. Thank you. Uh what I was gonna say about the topic is what's happening in uh south of us here is going to happen here. Example, uh my my uh, son's friend. Had just bought a house right out of high school for about five hundred thousand dollars, working at basically a entry level job, and the banks are stupid enough to give him this mortgage because of the pure greed, the pure greed on behalf of the shareholders, the banks, everyone involved at the high level. And what's going to happen? The only way that house will ever be paid off is 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 one thing: is one of them die, or or, or basically, they throw the keys on the desk of the banker and walk away, and they still won't get their money. Yeah, I'm, I'm, there's a lot of that going around. But here's the deal: lots of people want to blame this on the banks, the mortgage companies, the lenders, and on the greed. And certainly, there was greed there. But there's also the greed on behalf of the borrowers, because yeah. what makes anybody who makes forty thousand dollars a year, or thirty thousand dollars a year, think they they have the right to be buying a house? Absolutely. Yeah, and and uh, I agree 100%. And and the, the you know I'll go by what my dad said. I'm 48 years old, and he said, you know what? Don't expect anybody to look after you. You got to look after yourself. And you know what? And he he taught me one thing. He, a lot of kids and I when I got out of high school, and I'm not saying I did everything right or wrong, but what I am saying is that I didn't go out and buy a thirty thousand dollar car. I worked and I paid cash for it. And I'm not one of these. Old guy telling people what to do because I hate that. But uh, you know, nowadays you got to think about that stuff. And when people stop thinking, they start reacting. As soon as you start reacting, instead of being proactive, you're going to be digging a deep, deep hole. And out here in Canada, that deep hole is full of snow. I completely understand. Don't disagree with you at all, Garth. On the Tom Likas show, hello. How you doing, Tom? Great. I just want to comment. It's kind of interesting what's happening with the economy. I work at an insurance company in Southern California. And I'm getting tons of calls of people that have lost their jobs that now need individual medical insurance and need to roll over their 401Ks into an individual IRA. And it's amazing when I tell them, you know, I ask them, what's the height and the weight? Are you on any medications? And they say, oh, I'm 250 pounds. I'm on this medication, that medication. I say, well, I'm sorry. Insurance companies don't want you. Well, they say, what am I supposed to do? And so when I tell my dad who's a physician these stories, he tells them to tell those fat asses to lose some weight. <laughs> it's true. Tell them lose some weight. They didn't plan ahead. They weren't thinking. They were sitting there eating all this food, sitting on the couch saying, who's going to take care of me? Who's going to take care of me? Then when they get their jobs cut, they go crying to me saying, it's my fault that the insurance companies won't accept them. Well, I think you're absolutely right about that, Garth. I thank you for it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Daniel on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Thanks for the call. Sure. Hey, I just wanted to mention that, you know, everybody talks about greed, but I think Americans should start waking up and take a more thorough look at the cross private federal reserve system because they are in charge of the money creation, and they created a situation of, uh, like Japan just 20 years ago. And without the money supply, 
there wouldn't be this problem. They excessively increased um, the money in circulations, and as a result, they devalued the dollar and allowed this mess to happen. And I think Americans should just start waking up and take well, a Well, I think Americans have to take their own responsibility uh, for taking out loans they knew they couldn't pay back, for borrowing on their credit cards amounts they could never pay back, buying homes they couldn't afford, leasing cars they had no right to have in their driveways. I mean, uh, there's plenty of greed to go around. It's not just the Federal Reserve. It's not just bankers, not just Bernie Madoff. The individual has to take his responsibility to take his lumps here. And there's a reluctance to blame the individuals to to tell uh, everybody that the average American is a victim in all this, and I just don't accept that. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Here comes Greg on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey, I wanted to uh, talk about the economy being so great. I'm telling you right now that I just uh, nailed a 4.5% home loan that I'm very excited about. Uh-huh. Bought a truck, valued out at $30,000 for half that. And I'm increasing all my 401k and all my stock purchases based upon the fact that when a bull market returns, historically, the first year of the bull market, it gets uh, the majority of your return in your money, which is approximately 48%. Well, I, as I have said on the air, one uh, listener wrote to me a very long email telling me how stupid I am. But um, I have continued investing as uh, the market has dropped. Yes, because if, if what people don't realize, if you invest at the same time month after month, whether the market's high or low, when the market's low, you purchase more shares. Right. And there's trillions of dollars sitting on the sidelines right now to be getting ready to be dumped back into the market. So, like I said, that first year of the bull market's when we'll make all our money back. No, I can tell you right now, I'm, uh, I've kept my Lexus that I have for four years, the longest I've ever owned one. <laughs> and now is the time I'm going to upgrade. Sure. So, uh, but, you know, I am guessing that it's a buyer's market. And um, I'm just going to let all the dealers compete with each other until I get the absolute lowest price, and then I'm going to buy from them, whoever that happens to be. Yeah, exactly. I take advantage. This, I'm, is, this I'm, is a great time. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I know there's a lot of uh, dealers out there uh, who uh, can't get financing for their customers. And I'll tell you what, I, I deal in cash how to trade it, and I will, I will get the best deal you can possibly get. But I've waited for this opportunity Yeah. Oh, yeah. by sure. design. Sure. Well, thanks, Tom. Hey, take me out Kobe style, will you? All right, Greg, here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Carlos on the Tom Like a Show. Hello. What's up, Tom? Not much, Carlos. Um, I wanted to. Uh, I don't. I don't want to sound too. Um, uh, you know, I'm patriotic, but wasn't it? Didn't uh, Reverend Wright have some truth when he said that the chickens are coming home to roost? With, you know, with all what's, what's going on. Well, nobody ever said that everything Reverend Wright said was wrong. No, I know. It's, I know. It's just. Uh, but he he had some truth in that in what he said, right? That the chickens are coming home to roost? Well, I happen to agree with that. They are coming home to roost. I, I just have a feeling, based on the first words of our conversation, that uh, your chickens and my chickens might be a little different. <laughs> yeah, they are. But, um, I, yeah, I just wanted to make that comment, you know. Though, and which I, chickens are you referring to? Just just everything, you know, the economy, the way things are going, the, the, the country. Yeah, but but you see, here's the deal. I, I, I'm just going to make a little bet here. I am willing to bet that you think the chickens coming home to roost means that bankers and stockbrokers are a bunch of greedy guys and now the chickens are coming home to roost. Uh, not realizing that there's greed all the way around, including the average moron who lives on your street. Yeah, but the average moron wouldn't be able to get that loan if it wasn't for these... Uh, yeah, no, but even the point is he never should have applied for a loan. What about personal responsibility? How about you not apply for a loan that you're not going to be able to repay? Well, yeah, I understand that, but... Now, why you know, doesn't the individual have to take any responsibility? I understand what you're saying. Well, so so it isn't just the bankers or the brokers. It is also the individual morons who, who lied on their stated income loans to get to buy houses they had no right to own. But don't, don't the real estate agents also help them lie? Yeah, there's enough to go around. Why are they lying? 
they want to get the house, I guess. Yeah. Well, guess like, what? That, that lying is as bad as anybody else's lying. I don't talk about the brokers, the real estate brokers. I'm talking about the, the buyers. Why are yeah. they lying? Yeah, I, yeah, I understand what you're saying. You just want to blame everybody else. All right. You have to blame everybody because everybody participated. Right. You know what? And Sean Hannity says that we're having an economic slowdown. We're not having a... Well, again, uh, I, 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 Sean Hannity is a wonderful person and someone I've known for many years. And I, I, I love him to death. He's, I consider him a good friend. But I'm going to say this. Uh, this is not just an economic slowdown. Here's how much the economy slowed down. Sean Hannity used to work for ABC Radio. And uh, that ABC Radio was bought by a company called Citadel Communications, which in the second quarter of 2008 lost over $800 million. What you haven't heard Sean Hannity say is he doesn't work for Citadel anymore. They shuffled him off to uh, premier radio networks. And uh, be very, just, just very quiet about that. My question is, why did he change companies? If I get a chance, I'm going to ask him that. Why don't you? I, I mean, again, I love him to death. I, I know Sean. I love him. I've, I've, I've uh, spent uh, many an evening with him at uh, conventions. We've been on TV together. We've shared many glasses of wine together. Personally, I think he's a fantastic guy. But to go on the radio and say that without completely revealing <laughs> who he works for, I mean, has he ever gone on the air and said, I just changed companies and I'm now working for another company? Never. I've never heard him say well, that. Well, you know, there's a reason he had to change companies. Because the company he used to work for overpaid for, in my opinion, they overpaid for a bunch of radio stations and, and radio networks and what have you. And they had to take a big write-down. And it's all due to the economy and the economic slowdown. And it ended up they did not renew his contract. Instead, now he runs on their stations, but he works for somebody else. Hey Tom, can I ask you one more question? Yeah. Uh, you think you think God's helping Kurt Warner get to the Super Bowl? I I highly doubt it. Thank you, Jesus. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. The Tom Likas Show. God damn it! The Tom Likas Show from Hollywood at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Like us 101 is just 15 minutes away. You can start calling right now at 1 800 5 800 Tom. It's 1 800 5 800 866. Like us 101, your professor will be answering your questions. Coming up 15 minutes from now. 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Talking about the lousy economy, Hal of the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, it's Hal. I know, I just said that. Oh, I didn't hear you. I didn't catch that. Yes. Hey, uh, anyway, I'd like to thank you for being the stalwart investor that you are. Well, it's, thank you. Yeah, well, you know, it's going to be me who's going to be reaping the rewards of it pretty soon. Well, you really believe that? I, I do. I just graduated from college, and, you know, obviously I'm just getting on my own economic feet. Um, so it's good that I'm experiencing this recession right now um and it's weeding out all of the weeds of this economy I well mean, that's gonna are... be that's gonna be good for you me and everybody yeah i mean I, once we get some of the dead wood out of there and the dead beats yep uh it's gonna be a lot uh healthier environment in which to save and invest and plan yeah i mean it's very obvious that this this economy right now is just it's been filled with all these dead beats like you said and uh, but it's people like you and your faithful financial listeners who are going to recreate the economy in the best way possible. And I, I want to thank you. Well, like I say, I, I do believe uh, you know if, if the Warren Buffett knows what he's doing. He yeah. does. He has to. And Warren That's Buffett has been investing in stocks. Yep. And that's he's, the way to go. If he's right in, now. I'm in. Good. Good. <laughs> hey, I also have a question for you. Yes. I just graduated from college, and I've got three different student loans with three different companies. Yes. Would it make sense to get a consolidated loan and put them all together in one place? Only if it would save you money. Okay. Do you know anything about that? Well, again, it has to save you money. I mean, it has to be right. a lower interest rate than what you're paying. You, okay. also have to, you also have to check with your accountant. I don't know about uh, write-offs. Uh -huh. Are you able to write off uh, the interest on your student loan? I am, 
it's, a, it's deductible up to 2500 Well, the problem with the consolidation loan is that you might lose that write-off. That's if true. You, if you consolidate. So don't do anything without the advice of a, of a real CPA. Okay. That's and, fantastic, Tom. All right. Can you take me out subway style? Subway style. Uh, actually, yes, I believe we can. Five. Oh, my God. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Mark on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, Father, how are you doing today? Doing okay, son. Um, I tell you what, this economy has been... Actually, my work has really changed on you. You always need a plumber, you know? A good plumber goes out there, does his job. They weeded out all the bad plumbers, finally. How, do they, how, do, they weed out, how do they weed out all the bad plumbers? Well, if uh, you're not good and the business comes downhill, well... You know, downhill. Now, let me ask you a question. Uh, do you show up on time and smell good? Yes, I do. I do. I don't have no crack either. No spackle here. No butt crack. That's right. Just I'm checking. not one of the typical plumbers. Because, again, I, I hear these commercials for plumbers who show up on time and smell good. I don't know what kind of an indictment that is for the rest of the industry. Well, it depends on what you're all working with. You know, if you're doing new construction. I mean, yeah, what do know. plumbers generally smell like? Uh, I like to wear the stuff called Very Sexy for Him from Victoria's Secret. one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Jerry on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom. Hey. Hey, uh, hey I, I got something to bring up here for something maybe a lot of us are not paying attention to. I just, car insurance right now. I, I just, uh, my, uh, I just renewed my car insurance in December. And maybe everyone, everyone with an SUV, SUV should definitely check into this one. Uh, my insurance, which I won't mention it, but they're all the same anyway. I called them and said I, my premium stayed about the same. And last year's statement showed me what the retail value, what I would get for my SUV if it were totaled or stolen or anything. It was around $24,000. And I told my insurance, I said, hey, with the way things are going now, what am I going to get? That my age told me you're probably going to get half. I go half because all the values dropped. I go well then shouldn't my premiums have dropped? I shouldn't be paying this much if you guys only cover me for half. He goes that's a can of worms that the insurance industry is not going to get into. But with SUVs you just lost half the value of your car. So I go so I'm not going to get 24 no. So those who still owe a year or two on their vehicle. You know, they better start worrying that, hey, that you just lost your butt on your car there. It well, I, I, I recommend with things like car insurance and home insurance that you start uh, pricing that stuff out and uh, checking the competitors. I have they, the lowest one. Uh, I, I'm serious. I, I've called. When I call, everywhere I've gone to, I've gone to that lizard one or I've gone to that one. And the one I go to, they've always told me, they go, because I have a clean driving record. And they said, no one can be... If you have a bad driving record, we will beat everyone else, or we will beat that one. But since I have a clean driving record, uh, no one beats the one I'm at. I've gone everywhere to every insurance company, yeah. but the one I'm with, they tell me, we can't beat them. If you've got a clean driving record, we well, can't beat just them. Like, like, just like a lot of banks haven't lowered their interest rates on credit cards and loans and things like that, uh, even though interest rates are at record lows, I'm sure the same thing's happening with insurance companies. The value of big cars and trucks has uh, deteriorated, and people are still paying these huge premiums. It, it is outrageous. And uh, the next place I'd call, if you can't get any uh, satisfaction from calling an insurance agent, is to call the commissioner's office. Because here in California, we have an insurance commissioner, and uh, that's an issue you should bring up. And everybody who uh, is in that position should bring that issue up. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Dan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? First time, going long time. Great. Check this out. I hate it. Those small chains, mom and pop stores, they give horrible customer service. Last time I checked, they're built on word of mouth. And they've seen pseudo recession or whatever you want to call it. Give customer service. Can you take a menu order properly? Can you get my drink right? You know, let me talk to someone who knows what they're talking about. Well, I've got to tell you something. I, 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 you're right about that. And you know what I've done? 
I am being ruthless now at cutting everybody out of my life that I do business with who doesn't provide me with top-of-the-line service. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's banks or brokerages or car dealers or insurance. I, I am just I'm going through with an axe. You know, if you think these companies can't go through with an axe and, and as they continue to fire people, I'm doing that with the people I do business with. I was on the phone with my cell phone company today. I'm going to have the lowest possible rate or I'm cutting you out of my life. That's it. Done. I agree. Tom, you and the gods work. Can you blow me out? Yes, I can. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Ken on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Ken. I, I love your show. Thank you. First time, first time caller, long time listener. Though. Long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> but um, the reason why I was calling is because I was one of the top account executives at a subprime mortgage lending company that went under. And the reason why I was calling is because what I seen while I was working there is so much fraud. The fraud that I seen um, increased when the number of immigrants that actually came over on in, onto the uh, the uh, over the border, most of the loans that I dealt with were mostly, you know, all illegal immigrants that didn't even have social security cards, and uh, really that that pretty much took everything over the top. And then once the uh, option arm program came out, that really just really took the cake. After the option arm program came out. The the home that the that the uh, um, consumers were going into, the property went upside down so much that they couldn't get out of the jail. Well, I, I I absolutely see, and uh, we've heard many horror stories like yours. Believe me. All right, our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Coming up next, your professor tells you how to get laid for less money. Just call 1-800-5800-TOM right now. Like us 101 is next as we continue. 1-800-5800-866. Your calls are coming up next. The Tom Likas Show.